<laughs> so what kinds of things <laughs> oh, would you like me to tell you? So What's just tell this? us Sorry. about your parents moving here and okay. uh, yeah. maybe where yeah, they came from that. first because you okay. said there was a backstory where they had a restaurant. And, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, my parents had a restaurant called the Corral Cafe on West Highway 30. Mm -hmm. And originally we were from the Scotts Bluff area. And we had a restaurant that had called the Eagle Cafe, which was opened in like in the early, what, it had been there for 55 years when they closed in 67. <laughs> so it had been there a long time, but we moved to Kearney because my oldest sister uh, was in college and my dad decided that he could not afford to educate his children unless he moved to a college town. And their partners were getting ready to retire and so they sold that and um, opened the restaurant here in Kearney. So, um, when we moved to Kearney, it was a little bit of a culture shock for us mm -hmm. because there were so few minorities in Kearney at the time. Um, we came from the Scotts Bluff area. That was probably 25, I'm just guessing, 25% minorities, either Hispanic mm -hmm. or Asians. And we came to Kearney, and there were maybe two Hispanics in my class and no Asians in the, the school, so it was a big change for us. Mm -hmm. um, just coming to the community and introducing, my parents introduced the first oriental food mm -hmm. to the Kearney area. They served things like chow mein and chop suey and eventually people talked them into serving things like udo noodles and um, sukiyaki and some of the things that are more traditionally Japanese. Okay. Um, the uh, Highway 30, at that time, the Interstate 80 had just opened, and so there wasn't as much business there, but they really developed a clientele from the college that were really good about supporting the restaurant and loved the fact that we had oriental food. And mm -hmm. uh, so many times you hear stories from different people that I'll run into and they say, oh, we remember when we used to come and have those wonderful salads and they were huge and all my sorority sisters would come out and yeah. we'd have these great big salads. And I remember having to make those great big salads. So, <laughs> and but back then it was, you know, fairly new to have that restaurant. And yeah. over the years they were able to um, remodel and change things and we um, had different events and you end up ha we had a counter where single um, men or whoever wanted to could mm -hmm. come and sit at the counter and you just ended up having certain people that came almost every day you know I remember um, Mr. Hirschfeld you know uh, who used to come in and and he ordered the same thing every day and I remember Mr. Briggs from the college who would come and eat every day also and um, my mom would make special pies for them if she knew something that they liked and we had so many people from the motels that would also be there. Um, you know, some of those fun little stories of things that happen is uh, one time when it, there was a blizzard and we couldn't get anyone to work, um, we ended up, uh, the restaurant was closed but the motels called and said, we've got all these people who need food. So we ended up closing or opening up our kitchen and just serving people buffet style so that we could um, accommodate their needs. So, and then there's just so many people that ate there over the years mm -hmm. that you just have a lot of stories and fun things that you can talk about. So, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> is that enough? <laughs> that's that's okay. That's really interesting. Yeah, um, I, I think there were a lot of restaurants, and you know, the thing about restaurants is that you have certain people that are almost like your family. Yeah. Just because they, you know, come in all the time, mm -hmm. and, and my mom would do, treat them like family. Yeah. She tried to make the things that they liked, and um, you just saw them all the time. And mm -hmm. so many times you, you grew up knowing people and their stories just because you saw them when they were young, and then you saw them as they got. Yeah.
older and, yeah. and different couples that used to sneak into their, what we call uh, a banquet room or mm -hmm. side area. And, but they were usually dating, and so they, they would want a quieter spot. And so there's just fun things like that that make it fun to be able to remember some of those stories. So mm -hmm. but hopefully that's a, a little bit, especially since I'm yeah. prepared. <laughs> but so what side of town was this restaurant at? It was located right across the street from West campus where okay. the old TB hospital was and right directly across the street from them was like the Barodio trailer court mm -hmm. and the Hammer Motel. So we used to get a lot of people from the Hammer Motel and from um, the Shady Rest Motel and from St. John's um, and some of those places. So there was a lot of different places that um, patronized that, yeah. that restaurant. So, um, but it's, it's fun to look back on that. And I remember having to wear hose and white uniforms and we had aprons and little hats that you'd wear on yeah. your head. And, um, you know, it's those old fashioned restaurants and the things that they did. But, yes. um, but it, it was always fun. And I, I, I also remember my dad, and this was way back when, when um, the YRTC was called the Boys Training School. Mm -hmm. And my dad would um, help train some of the um, students there. And they had to be on good behavior, and they had to um, you know, be willing to come down and work, but my parents would pay them a wage. And then when they graduated from that program, they were able to take that money with them. And my dad always had different students that were people that would come back and visit him and tell them how they were doing because I think they just appreciated the opportunities that he gave them. So that's those fun things that you used to do way back when. Yeah. And you know, and my dad had a philosophy that you helped anybody that you could and he really believed that any person, no matter what your job was, was important. So, you know, it didn't matter if you were the dishwasher, the dishwasher's just as important as the cook because if you don't have clean dishes, people don't want to come to your restaurant. So yep. he, they taught us a lot of good lessons in working hard and those yeah. various things. Right on, right on. Okay. And uh, what year did this restaurant open? It opened, well, actually, I think the restaurant had been there a long time, and I'd love okay. to get more stories about it, mm -hmm. because it would be fun to just show, you know, what happened to some of those old-time restaurants, yeah. if we could get some of those stories. But they bought it uh, from Howard and Delight Fox in, I think it was 1967, mm -hmm. and they opened in um, 1968, because we moved in Jan or in December, and then they opened in January. Okay. And and then they basically sold the business back in 1983. So my mom had MS, and so for that reason she um, had had further health issues and couldn't continue. But they were also of retirement age. Yeah. But she was one of those people that loved her restaurant and would go to work even when she was recovering from a bout and would use her walker and she'd be over there, you know, visiting with people and just making sure that their needs were taken care of. Yeah. So, Right on. Okay. <laughs> hey, well, thank you. Okay. Yes. Thank you. That was that was really inter inter interesting. Honestly. Okay. Um. All right. Well, that's okay. it. That's thank good. you. That sounds good. Thank you. So.